Welcome back. All right. So fresh from an interview with TSN Radio and all that. Um, and that was that was fun. I enjoyed doing that today. So if you haven't already checked it out, you can. Uh, you could do the replays. I was on gameplay today. So that yeah, was fun. Wouldn't mind doing that again. All right. That being said, we need to talk about Peter Laviolette. Now, Laviolette's been hired today by the Rangers. And I felt like rather than just throwing this into a news video, why don't we just do a career of Pat Peter Laviolette, a coaching career video? which I haven't done one of in a while, and it makes some sense to do this, is La Violette, with 752 career wins, is 8th on the all-time list. Now, he also becomes the 37th coach in New York Rangers history. So how does he get here? Mostly by coaching in the Metro Division, or at least teams that would end up being in what's now the Metro Division. So he's hired in 2001 by the New York Islanders, the 0102 Islanders. They go 42-28-8-4. Uh, they lost the first round against the Toronto Maple Leafs that year. His following year, also with the Islanders, obviously, 35-34-11-2, uh, and, and they lost in the first round against the Ottawa Senators. Now, following that loss, and considering they had a rough finish to that season, Mike Milbury fires him June the 3rd. Says, nope, that's it, he's done. So, he wasn't out of work for very long, and Peter Laviolette generally has not been out of work that long. That's how he ends up being 11th on the all-time list for games coached, and eighth on the wins list as well. So uh, partway into the 0304 season, he's hired by the Carolina Hurricanes. They fired Paul Maurice and they hired him. Uh, December 15th, he takes over behind the bench for Carolina and they go 20, 22, six and four. That third column is ties. The fourth column is overtime losses. Uh, no playoffs for Carolina that first year he's behind the bench, but the second year behind the bench, things go a little bit better. 0506, keeping in mind 0405, there was no hockey. 0506, 52, 22, and 8, and they won the Stanley Cup. So that's his cup ring. He does bring that experience with him to the New York Rangers, a team that's looking to get themselves over the hump. That was 17 years ago. I agree with people who are going to say that, but he does have Stanley Cup experience. Then 06, 07, things don't go great for Carolina after that. 40, 34, and 8, no playoffs. 07, 08, 43, 33, and 6, again, no playoffs. So starting the 08, 09 season, expectations might have been a little bit higher at the very least. The idea is La Violette's not getting it done, so they go 12, 11, and 2, and he was fired December 3rd and replaced by uh, Paul Maurice. So he replaced Paul Maurice, and then Maurice replaced him and the team went to the Eastern Conference Final in 2009 after the firing of uh, Peter Laviolette. So he's hired again the following season during the season. So December 4th, he's hired by the Philadelphia Flyers, the 09-10 season. They got off to a rough start. And they had a rough time when Laviolette first took over. But they end up going 28-24-5 under Laviolette. Uh, they lost the Stanley Cup Final against Chicago that year. So he was behind the bench for Philly the year that they got there with the ridiculous goaltending carousel they had going in those playoffs and the regular season going in. Um, so yeah, that's a good way to, to get your debut in with the Flyers. So that's the Stanley Cup and a finals appearance. 2010-2011, 47-23-12. and 12. They lost in the second round against Boston that year, a team that they had come back from 3-0 down to win in seven against the year before. 2011-2012, uh, they go 47-26-9. and nine. They lost in the second round again, this time against the New Jersey Devils. 2012-2013, a lockout-shortened season. They went 23-22-3, and, and there were no playoffs. So to start the 2013-2014 season, clearly the Flyers had him on a short leash. He only coached three games. They lost all three, and so on October 7th, he was fired and replaced by Craig Berube. And under Craig Berube, the team made the playoffs. So they recover from that slow start. They make the playoffs. And so he is out of a job for the rest of the 2013-2014 season. But in between the 13-14 and 14-15 season, he's hired by the Nashville Predators. He is their second coach all time. Barry Trotz was there forever. And then Laviolette takes over. So his first year behind the bench in Nashville, they do pretty well. Uh, 47, 25, and 10. They did lose in the first round against Chicago. Nobody was beating the 2015 Chicago Blackhawks. 2015, 2016, they go 41, 27, and 14. They actually got out of the first round that year. They lost in the second round against San Jose. Uh, 2016, 2017, a miracle season here. The regular season wasn't great. 41, 29, and 12. But then they went on that Cinderella run all the way to the Stanley Cup final where they lost against the Pittsburgh Penguins. So the Islanders, he's only there two years. 
not much to write home about there. The Islanders going through some things. Carolina, he wins the Stanley Cup. The Flyers, he goes to the final. And with Nashville, he goes to the final as well. So he's very good in the playoffs. 2017-2018, uh, Nashville coming off of that run of the finals. Really solid regular season. 53-18-11. and 11. They did lose in the second round against Winnipeg in a battle of one versus two in the standings. 2018-2019, they go 47-29-6. and six, And they lost in the first round against the Dallas Stars. So things are going pretty darn well. And then 2019-2020, on January 6th, after the team's gone 19, 15, and 7, the Preds decide we're looking in another direction. We have to make a change. He was replaced by John Hines. So that was the end of it for him. Uh, of course, that year, the Nashville Predators lost the qualifying round against the Arizona Coyotes. So not a great finish for things for Nashville after they fired LaViolette, and then he gets hired by the Washington Capitals. So he's, he's never out of, out of a job for very long. From 2001 until now, he has never been out of work for very long. Uh, the recycling of coaches, maybe 50% of this is LaViolette, right? So he's hired by Washington that first year. They go 36-15-5. and five. It was a 56-game season. They lose in the first round against Boston. So no miracle run there. 2021-2022, they go 44-26-12. and 12, And they lost in the first round against Florida. And of course, coming out of that, Washington gets rid of Samsonov and Vanacek and decides to redo some things. And this year, I think expectations were higher than where they ended up. They ended up 35, 37, and 10, and uh, there were no playoffs. And on April the 14th, it was reported that the team and the, the coach had mutually agreed to part ways. Um, I, I always wonder how real that is, how accurate that is. Did they both decide or did one say, look, either you're going to quit or we're going to fire you? All right, I agree, we will mutually part ways. Uh, but at any rate... So that takes place, and now he becomes the head coach for the New York Rangers. Again, 1,430 games behind the bench. 752 wins is 8th. 503 losses is 14th on the all-time list. To go with 25 ties and 150 losses in overtime or in shootouts. His 587 points percentage behind the bench, not bad, through five different teams. So, again, today, June the 13th of 2023, He's hired as the head coach for the New York Rangers. He's a good coach. He's got a good resume. But again, it's a very, it's a colorful one. Like his time in Nashville was the longest of all of his runs because Nashville has more patience with coaches or at least had more patience with coaches than other franchises. Uh, we've seen Hines let go. So maybe that's starting to change in Nashville. But I, I do like LaViolette. I know there are people who may have wanted Patrick Waugh. I Honestly, I would love to see Patrick Waugh go behind the bench for the New York Rangers, but clearly that wasn't going to happen. And so now he takes over a Rangers team that, again, more was expected of them this year. They ended up going out in the first round. Uh, can he get Panarin over the hump in the playoffs? Again, if we look at his track record, other than the Capitals and the Islanders, every team he's coached has at least gone to a Stanley Cup final. So that has to be seen as encouraging. But I know there will be a lot of people who say, oh, recycling coaches. It's just that's the way things have always been in the NHL, uh, for right or for wrong. And again, as we always say, coaches are hired to be fired, as has been the case here. Other than apparent mutual agreement to part ways in Washington, every other time he's been fired. So we'll see, th see how things go with the Rangers. I wish them the best, and uh, we'll see. Because, again, the Rangers last year looked like they were on the cusp of maybe becoming a Stanley Cup champion for the first time since 94. And we'll see if this team can get it done next season. What do you expect from the Rangers? What do you expect from La Violette? How do you feel about this hiring? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.